Hello everyone and welcome back to PM Studios Intermediate Java Programming Tutorials. Today we are going to be finishing up with Java Forms. Um, we have gone over the basic structuring of a Java form. We have gone over some of the components that you can add to them, as well as going over um, how to add functionality to those components. So today we're just going to be expanding upon some of those areas. I'm going to be showing you how to add menu bars to, um, to your forms, as well as adding um, scroll bars, both horizontal and vertical, and then I will be showing you how to add functionality to those scroll bars because it's a little bit different from buttons. And that should do it for today, and we'll be finished up with forms for this tutorial series. I'm sure we'll touch back on them a little more next tutorial series. So, without further ado, the first thing I want to say is the last tutorial I know I had mentioned, the last couple tutorials rather, I know I mentioned that we should be doing um, set size and pack. Uh, my explanation was that pack packages everything inside the form and prepares it to be um, displayed on the screen. That's true, but it's not entirely true, and I sincerely apologize for any misleading that I might have done. Um, the in pack feature inside the JFrame construct, or the J, or whatever the public forms is, um, practice forms rather, it packages everything and then reads all of the items inside the actual form itself and then predetermines whatever size the actual form it need, whatever size the form needs to be which if you put it after you put the set size function it overrides whatever the set size is so sometimes you get this huge conflict of um, a form being too small for the items that you have inside of it because it's just automatically determining what you have inside the form and how large the form needs to be. So, and that's a word to the wise. You should either have one or the other. In this case, for this tutorial, we are doing set size because we're going to be working with menu bars. And since we add the menu bar outside the practice forms class, the pack fe feature doesn't actually read it. So, that's something to keep in mind. And moving forward from that, let's go ahead and add our menu bar today. So the first thing we're going to be doing is creating the actual menu bar to add. So J menu bar, pretty self-explanatory, just like everything else. I'm going to call it menu bar, new J menu bar. And once we've created that, we need to physically add the J menu bar to the actual form. So contents dot set J menu bar, and then we're going to set it as menu bar. Pretty easy stuff so far. Oh, that's the wrong form, I apologize. Incrementer, there we go. Compile that. Now, I know it's hard to see, but there's a tiny little strip above the text field and the plus one button. There's nothing inside the menu bar yet, but I guarantee you it's there. And I'll do something here real quick just to show you that it really is there. So the next thing we need to do to the J menu bar is actually add menus to the bar. That's why it's called a J menu bar. It's a container for different menus. So we need to create a J menu object. Call it file equals new J menu file. And then we're going to add that to the menu bar. So menu bar dot add file. Obviously, you can see a trend going on here. We add the menu bar to the actual form, and then we're adding menus to the menu bar. And as you can imagine, we're going to be adding whatever goes inside the menus to the, um, to the actual menu itself. So now you can see the menu bar pretty clearly. We have a file menu. But when you click on it, there's nothing there yet. Because as I just stated, we don't actually have anything added to the menu itself. So to alleviate that, we need to learn one more item called J menu item. I'm going to call this one exit, which is the easiest one to work with. New J menu item exit. And then add that to the menu file. And now and when we click on the file menu, we now have an exit button, which doesn't do anything for now. 
because we haven't assigned an action listener for it. I will not be doing that this tutorial. It is essentially the exact same thing. If you wanted to add an action listener to it, you just go exit dot add action listener, and then you could do the exit action action listener because that's already pre-made. As a matter of fact, I will go ahead and do this now. Um, so exit dot add. Exit action. I need to add a new to that. And then theoretically, when we click the file, it exits out. So that's a quick way to add functionality to our menu. Um, if you want to add more to it, like a edit menu, for instance, or a new menu item inside the file menu, like most programs have, I'll let you go ahead and do that on your own. I just wanted to show you the absolute basic functionality of menu bars. Um, this is how you implement them. This is how you make them visible without scrunching up your forms. Um, so please go ahead and keep that in mind. We might revisit this next tutorial series in the advanced tutorials, but that won't be for a while. So moving on to the actual practice forms class, we need to make a new variable or a new object rather called or I'm just gonna public J scroll bar so let's just do start num actually let's just call it num scroll bar for now num slider even just to save on those keystrokes for now um, so basically there are two different types of sliding bars that you can add to your forms we have J scroll bars, which are on the right side of your Internet, Internet Explorer or your Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome, depending on which one you use, Opera, any Internet browser you have, that's what's on the right side right there. You use it to scroll up and down the page, which is why it's called a scroll bar. The other one you have is a slider, which is essentially a adjustable number bar or number line, adjustable number lines. So, granted, you can do more than just adjust number lines with it, but that is essentially, at its most bare form, what it is. So we're going to be using scroll bars simply because it has arrow buttons on the sides that we can use, um, and that is something that we need. So, moving forward with this, we need to go ahead and add num slider to the form now. So we need to go jp dot add just like everything else num slider equals new j scroll bar and this is the unique thing about j scroll bars that you need to know um, most importantly is you need to go j scroll bar dot horizontal and there's actually several overload methods for this um, you can give it its orientation you can give it its orientation, its um, length, its width, and its starting location. Any combination of, um, well, actually, yeah, it's any any number of those items you can add, but it has to go in order of that. So it's uh, orientation, length, width, and starting location on the slider. So that's something important to keep in mind. Now that we have that added, we can go ahead and compile the form again just because I want to show you what's going on here. Now this is the horizontal orientation. I stretch that out a little bit too much, but as you can see it is horizontal. So we can click on the buttons and we can still see the slider form. It doesn't do anything at the moment because we haven't assigned an adjustment listener, which is the slider bars version of a action listener. Um, but we'll get there. So now that we have this finished, and just to show you exactly what would happen if we didn't declare it as horizontal, let's just go ahead and compile this. And as you can see, all we see are the two arrows pointing up and down. Now if we expand the form, you can see the slider just fine, but that's why we don't want it. Also, with this one, it starts up at the top, so you have to click down to increase our number values, which doesn't really make much sense. So. Let's just go ahead and stick with the horizontal orientation and everything will be happy. So J scroll bar done. Horizontal. Okay. 
So you can add all of the different settings that I'm going to be adding here in just a moment anywhere you like after the addition of the actual scroll bar to the form. Um, but I'm just going to put them right under the output TF just for the sake of having them somewhere quickly. Uh, we're going to go num slider dot set maximum 110. So that's another thing I want you to keep in mind is that when we're writing these scroll bars, the actual arrows take up 10 points of the maximum value. And this is what we're doing right here is we're setting the maximum scroll value of the uh, of the actual scroll bar. So it will go from 0 to 100 with this. Now technically it will go from 0 to 110, but each arrow takes up 5 points, so basically the meat inside the middle is going from 0 to 100. And I'll show you that exactly so that you have some proof of what I'm talking about in a little bit. Next thing we need to do is give it a set um, a preferred size, so num slider dot set preferred size. We're going to go new dimension, and let's just go 100 comma 20. We don't necessarily need this line if we're using a flow layout because the flow layout will automatically size the slider. Um, or the scroll bar in this instance, it'll automatically adjust the scroll bar to take up its entire allocated space. But just so we give you a bit of a better understanding of all the different functionalities we can use, I went ahead and put it in. So, and lastly, we have um, the actual adjustment listener. So, num slider set, or rather add adjustment listener. We're going to make one in a second called new slider action. Since it's essentially an action listener that's continuously searching for adjusted inputs, um, it's called an adjustment listener as opposed to an action listener. So let's go ahead and just compile this all together. It's going to say that slider action doesn't exist, which is fine. We just need to jump in here and create it real quick. And then we'll be finished for today. So import java.awt.event.asterisk. Just like any other action listener, we're going to go public class slider action without the space preferably. And this implements adjustment listener as opposed to the action listener of the buttons. So we're going to create a instance of the practice forms class. Just like we did in all of the other action listeners. And then the last thing we're going to do is create a bar val. Um, it's just going to be an integer value that we're calling upon in a few minutes. Public void, obviously, um, adjustment value changed is what it's going to be called and we're going to add an, an adjustment event to that and here I'm going to stop and take a couple breaths just to explain exactly what I've done excuse me I've called in the library that contains the actual adjustment listener that we need we've created a class that contains the action listeners or the adjustment listeners and we've implemented that form which means we can call upon specific methods in there and just overload certain ones not create our own methods inside of it um, we're using practice forms uh, we're going to be using this to adjust the value of the text field from inside this class right here so that's a bit of an importance right there and this bar value is going to be a temporary storage of whatever this um, adjustment event catches. So so basically what this does is every time that slider, the little block in between the, uh, the two arrows is moved, either to the left or to the right, this does some mathematics in the background, takes a percentage of the total sliding, sli uh, total sliding distance of the, um, the slider bar, and uh, calculates that and does some calculations and turns it into an integer for us, 
that's sitting in between the max value and the minimum value of our slider bar. So it's it's very sophisticated, I'm sure. So we're going to call on bar val. We're going to set that equal to a dot get value. So what that does is it calls on adjustment event. When this method is called, adjustment event is going to grab the, that mathematical value of the, uh, the scroll bar, and it's going to output that integer into bar val. And then we are going to directly pump that through to output tf. Set text, and we got to cast it again. Integer to string because text fields only accept string values, so we need to pump it a string value. There we go. Now, granted, we can streamline this a little bit by completely subverting this integer value and just setting this to a dot get value. We can subvert this line right here altogether. So it really depends on how complex you want to get. This is obviously the most streamlined version of this code possible. We are just calling in the um, incrementer class. We are calling in this specific instance, um, the one that everything else is working off of instead of creating our own instance for this. And then we are just directly taking the adjustment event value and pumping it directly into the incrementer's output.tf, or output text field. Um, so there's no middleman whatsoever, so that's something to keep in mind. I'm going to save this as slider action. Obviously the compilation is complete. Let's just run this guy once. We should be able to click this left button, and we have a value. So you can see it starts at 0 and goes up to 100. This is the maximum value. You can't go any further. But if you did want to go further, you could still click on that plus 1 right here, and that would take you as far as you needed to be. So we can either exit from here or exit from our new menu bar. And that should do it for today's tutorial. So just as a quick recap of what we've gone over, we learned that J menu bars are containers that you add to the actual forms themselves to contain different menus. And inside the individual menus, we have J menu items um, that perform functions. And you can add functionality to those J menu items by giving them action listeners just like the normal buttons on the actual form. And then we also learned that we can add scroll bars or sliders. Um, this time we use a scroll bar. You can set the orientation to either horizontal or vertical. We did horizontal this time. And then we can set its maximum value to. Um, whatever we need it to go up to plus 10 because the arrows take up five points of whatever the maximum value is. And we can also set the preferred size, which isn't necessarily needed for a flow layout, but if we were to use a grid layout or a, um, actually if we were to increase the size of the form, it would automatically default to whatever this is because we are using a grid layout here. Um, but this would work in either a grid or a flow layout given that it had enough space to work with. So, and then for sliders and scroll bars, we don't use action listeners. We use adjustment listeners because those are constantly listening to uh, what's being input rather than just um, quick momentary changes. So, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And that's it for this tutorial, as I stated earlier. Um, next tutorial, we are no longer going to be touching on JForms anymore. Uh, we are going to be going into sorting methods, which is a bit of a doozy, so go ahead and brace yourself. There are eight different sorting methods, and I have one tutorial planned for each individual sorting method. So I imagine there are going to be quite a few hurting brains from the people who are going to be watching them. Thank you, and have a great day.